Android 13 is now officially rolling out for Google Pixel phones, and it adds a number of important tweaks, tuning, and some alterations over last year's massive Android 12 overhaul. This might not be quite the drastic update in comparison. Even so though, here's all of the biggest and most notable user-facing features in Android 13 that we think you need to know. Our Android 13 coverage is brought to you by Phoenix, the minimal, lightweight, razor-thin case designed to enhance the look and feel of your phone without adding any extra bulk. Phoenix makes cases for those that want to show off their phone while still keeping it protected. You won't even notice the case is on until it falls to the ground and you notice it's done its job. There's a protective bumper surrounding the camera so that when you set down your phone or even drop it, the camera itself will be protected from scuffs and scrapes. And now to celebrate the launch of the brand new navy blue case for Pixel 6 and 6 Pro, you can get 20% off the entire lineup with code 95Google at phoenix.shop or via the link in the description. Instead of hiding your phone in a thick rubber case, don't be a fat pocket Freddy and try a Phoenix case for yourself. To make things a little bit easier before we dive in, we've compared everything here to the previous stable Android 12 L build, which is available on Pixel phones to show you all of these changes. And we've broken this video down into UI, usability, and cosmetic alterations. With that out of the way though, let's head over to the desk and get started with our full hands-on. When launching an app for the first time after updating to Android 13, you may see a slightly altered permissions panel, firstly with more rounded corners. And rather than giving access to files and media or generic files and media, you enable access to photos and videos or music and audio, depending on which files app requires access to. This also includes more colorful and obvious buttons within that floating pop-up menu. The allow and don't allow buttons will adhere to dynamic color settings and your system theming choices. On the lock screen, if you have multiple unread notifications, you may now see truncated alerts to help reduce information overload. A shorter pill will now show with line style app icons housed within it. Tapping or opening or even dismissing any notifications will make space and remove the smaller pills and give you a traditional look on that lock screen. The vibration menu within Android 13 now contains more options. Firstly, new calls, notifications, and alarms, interactive haptics headings, and these will help you direct to the controls that you will need at any moment's notice. That's not all though, as you can manually adjust the strength of vibration feedback for each notification type to suit you best. You can also adjust how your phone reacts to notifications and alarms. There's a new toggle to let your phone vibrate before initially a ringtone will kick in if you do not answer your phone right away. And this relies on sound being enabled on your device. It's not available in silent modes and vibrate modes. You're also able to disable alarm vibrations from this menu and even enable interactive media vibration. And this mimics a similar function found on many devices where haptics are used in conjunction with audio to enhance media viewing, but is available currently in a limited capacity. A new menu combines the display size and related text adjustments into one easy to manage panel for all things related to screen scaling and font options, including text and bold text, so that you can get a good grasp upon what you're viewing on a screen at any one point in time and saving two menus in the previous version. Within the color and motion settings section, there's also a new toggle to quickly enable or disable dark theme while adjusting all other visual and display options. Google has increased the volume of colors available within the basic color section within that wallpaper and style app. And this now includes 16 options with at least seven single tones, along with a further nine, nine dual tone options to apply alongside the wallpaper based dynamic color options that you do have at your fingertips. As part of yet another media player overhaul, when playing media in music, podcast, and selected video streaming applications, the playback progress bar will display a squiggly line to the left of the playback head to indicate just how much media has currently been played and showing you just how much is left. That will be viewed in a thin line to the right of that playback head itself. Visually, this makes it easier to see just at a glance how much of a song, podcast, or even video that you have completed. And this change is visible from the lock screen to the quick settings media player. Although spotted with the launch of the Pixel 6a running Android 12.1, when registering a fingerprint on Pixel 6 series handsets, a new enrollment setup interface is now present. An animated GIF 
will show you just which areas of your thumb or finger to place on the optical scanner throughout the process. And this helps ensure more accurate registration with heat zones showing just how to get that full coverage of that in-display scanner on your device. The Pixel Tips app layout has been altered with larger tiles and a more prominent device or OS highlights at the top of the main homepage. All features and functions remain identical to previous updates though, but it is a good way to highlight some of those new additions with the device that you currently own. If you do prefer to use a pattern for your device screen lock method, then the registration process has halted slightly. The pattern drawing tool is now more spacious with a slower trail when swipe patterns are visible within the deeper security setting. This makes it easy to see where you have swiped from and ensure a more accurate entry and is also visible on the lock screen when you have registered and set this feature up. Android 13 features a brand new photo picker that is streamlined and more privacy conscious as apps and services no longer need access to all of your on-device media. Instead, you can select a small pool of photos and videos to give access and then add to whatever service or platform that you do want to use the images for. After introducing Security Hub to Android 12, the latest release is adding a combined security and privacy menu that fuses on-device and account security settings. It features color-coded safety status indicators and prompts to even remove applications that are deemed insecure or potentially harmful by Android and Google. The screensaver menu has also been updated with options no longer hidden in submenus. The start now option is also renamed to preview if you do want to test out your screensaver while selecting options lets you access customization settings with an M3 button floating within a circular cube. Likely in preparation for the upcoming Pixel tablet, the Pixel Launcher now supports multiple saved layouts when in portrait or landscape mode. Ideally suited to devices with bigger screens, this doesn't quite mimic the iOS feature seen on iPads, but it does mean that apps and widgets will appear in different locations depending on how you customize within each portrait and landscape orientation. While the app taskbar was introduced for screens larger than 600 dpi in Android 12L, Android 13 now features an extra slot for quick app access. App suggestions will appear here if you do not choose up to six apps, although that said, you can use this option if you wish. Google has not only added a further app slot as well for that taskbar on larger displays, there's now a persistent app draw button that removes the need to swipe up, therefore accessing all on-device applications and being able to quickly switch between them at a moment's notice and it's going to be a great option for tablet and larger screen foldable phones out there. If you prefer the classic three button navigation method, in Android 13 you're able to disable the long press of that circular home button when invoking or activating the Google Assistant. It is important to note that if you do disable this option, the corner swipe to invoke the Assistant is not available when using on-screen buttons. There are two brand new quick settings tiles to add to your device and access and activate modes quickly here in Android 13. You can now add a dedicated one-handed mode toggle to activate or deactivate the swipe down gesture on that gesture bar or nav bar to enter this extra reachability mode. There's also a Google Lens powered QR code reader that's also available. And this lets you quickly launch into lens and scan QR codes from any screen within Android 13. Scanning is very quick and it lets you copy text, open web pages, and much more on top of that. To help with access, Android 13 power menu and settings shortcut access buttons have moved to the very bottom right of the quick settings panel. This means that you don't necessarily need to reach up to access to important areas and also has the benefit of cleaning up the main notification panel with slightly smaller activation buttons. This also includes the guest mode if you do have this activated. The notification and lock screen now playing media notification pane has gained a substantial overhaul yet again here in Android 13 with changes to almost all aspects. The new UI shuffles up the design as a whole with a dedicated play pause button off to the right, skip and back controls along the bottom row with the track scrubber in between. And shuffle and like buttons are also present for specific applications with extra toggles for podcast apps there too. Album art has also returned, but in a throwback move, this envelops and themes the entire mini player to show exactly what you're listening to at any point in time. 
The playback progress bar is also more prominent with those aforementioned squiggles showing just how much of a track or podcast or even video that you have completed. When launching apps for the first time or after an extended period without usage, you'll get a pop-up panel to confirm that you want to allow incoming notifications. This ensures that only the apps you want to send pings will be able to do so, and it's part of even greater privacy controls here within Android 13. Google is making it easier for bilingual Android 13 users to set apps to their preferred language without adjusting the system-wide locale or language with an enhanced per app language option. This feature allows you to dive into settings or the app settings, and if an application supports multiple languages or dialects, then you can set it to another default upon launch. And this can be made on an app by app basis, so you don't have to make any other changes beyond the applications that you want to be in a different language or dialect. Within the developer options section, there is now a new toggle to enable stylus handwriting support. And this means that palm and stylus touches are registered completely separately. It also hints that we might see stylus support for the upcoming Pixel tablet later in 2023. As it stands, it doesn't actually work with the Pixel 6 and 6 series, but it is an option hopefully for future devices that will take this on board with the Android 13 update. When you copy any text or images with your clipboard in Android 13, you'll now get a bottom left overlay, much like the screenshot option, showing a preview of just as what has been captured. In the case of text, you've shown an enlarged preview of what you've copied alongside an edit button. As you'd expect, this opens up a very simple editor after tapping where you can view and tweak the text that you've copied. And this can be helpful for removing unwanted parts of URLs that you've managed to copy, such as stripping Twitter's share identifiers, but it is a great new option that keeps things consistent with what was added in Android 12. To help you quickly control any of your connected smart home devices, Google has introduced a new toggle simply titled control from lock device. This option, which is off by default, allows control of external devices without needing to unlock your phone and therefore does not require a passcode or pin to access and control those home devices. This doesn't work for any and all that we've tried that may require an external app to communicate and control via the Google Assistant or the Google Home, so it may work on a case by case basis. If you happen to have automatic battery saver mode enabled, when your battery hits a specific percentage, well, the minimum limit has now been raised from five to 10%. And this is likely a way to ensure that your phone has even longer before it hits those ultra battery saving modes. You may notice a new setting within the quick settings panel that will show any active apps on your device. And these are listed as apps that are running in the background even without user input. This can be viewed by fully expanding that quick settings panel. Tapping this allows you to fully stop or help improve device performance by stopping these apps and hopefully battery longevity will be improved as a result. However, some may be required for ideal functionality. So we would say err on the side of caution with this one if you're stopping applications constantly worrying that it will affect your battery life. When moving widgets and apps around your home screen pages with the Pixel Launcher, the drop targets at the upper portion of the display have been adjusted. When moving an app or an app icon, the remove and uninstall buttons are now much closer together. That said, it doesn't affect functionality. This remains exactly the same. If you have a Pixel 5 or newer, the back panel quick tap gesture is gaining a much needed option to quickly toggle the flashlight. This will save time and means you don't necessarily need to access that quick settings tiles or unlock your device to enable the function. And it works pretty well in our experience. The Pixel Launcher app draw search bar can now show app shortcuts as well as some selected in-app content. Direct web searches powered by the Google app are also available with app specific searches now joining that app draw widget for extra functionality. If you've not yet set up focus mode within the digital wellbeing settings, Upon first launch or when creating a new schedule, Android 13 will automatically rank or put list apps at the top of the list, which are deemed your most distracting or your most used, and therefore makes it slightly easier to set up quickly if you do want to quietly and quickly remove applications that you find distracting on a day-to-day -day basis. The back gesture is fairly uniform in Android in that it will go back one screen each time the motion is used. Android 13 though features a new predictive back animation, which is available within the developer options, which will show you just where you're gonna be taken back after holding the back edge screen gesture. This makes it easier to determine just what page or screen you're heading back towards 
but it is something that you will, as we mentioned, need to enable within developer options and the applications will need to support them in future. If you do happen to have applications that are actively drawing more power or using more battery within a 24 hour period, then you may now see a pop-up within the battery settings menu that will inform you of this. Tapping will just show what applications are draining the internal cell the most and the notice indicates that you may run out, run out of battery sooner than you normally would. There is no option to force stop or disable these applications, meaning you'll need to manually go in and adjust this as you see fit. If you have guest profiles enabled on your phone, then you're now able to add eight colorful profile icons as standard. Eight generic color presets are available when you set this up, but you are still able to set custom profile images either via your device camera or for any image saved within your gallery as you have been able to in previous versions of Android. The large two line clock on the lock screen hasn't changed too drastically in Android 13, but the text size and the gap between the fingerprint icon for devices with the in-display scanner has been adjusted by a few pixels to gain a little bit more space on your lock screen and it is noticeable when held side by side. The quick settings tile for device controls has now been renamed Android 13 to Home to more closely align with the Google Home application. This also includes a new thicker line style icon. The new bolder home icon is also now visible on the lock screen when the show device controls option is activated within the dedicated lock screen settings page. All functionality remains the same, but it is a brand new icon. A brand new animation has been added explaining just how the hold for home assistant works when using the three button navigation method. This also shows you just how to activate by long pressing that circular home button while using the three button navbar option. Some minor changes to the lock screen and pin entry screen sees the emergency call button renamed to emergency while key entries are now shown just above the keypad rather than towards the upper portion of your display for greater visibility. When casting your device display out to a supported Android TV or Chromecast device, there is a new pop-up UI that includes rounded corners and larger, more prominent buttons. The entire pop-up is altered with a larger settings button that is themed by dynamic color settings. Text is also changed to the standard Google Sans text and space overall is reduced. A larger cast screen to device header is also placed beneath a cast icon for an overall more cohesive look with material U theming settings. Naturally, Google has updated and added the new Android 13 or Tiramisu system icon, and this is visible when plugging into a computer or another device. The new icon is shaped like a gear or cog with the famous bug droid sat atop a squat T, and it definitely is in keeping with the rest of Google's Android letter iconography. When unlocking or using the in-display fingerprint scanner, Apps on your home screen will now pulsate into view or increase in size before animated into that home screen view, which changes from the sliding perspective that has been used on previous versions. More prominent pill shaped buttons are being utilized across the OS in Android 13, and this is probably going to be most notable in the settings menu and associated subsections with rounded dynamic color powered M3 buttons definitely being used more frequently. Android 13 now includes an updated and thicker Jesty Nav bar, making this the first alteration since it was introduced with Jesty Nav in Android 10. It is, as we mentioned, it's thicker than the Android 12 Nav bar, and it certainly makes it clearer, but has more than a faint whiff of iOS, which has used gestures exclusively on selected handsets since 2017's Android 10. That said, the actual functionality has not changed at all. It's just a thicker line to make it much more prominent. To follow changes made to the Google Lens icon back in March 2021, the icon has now been updated in the Pixel Launcher search widget. It definitely resembles a consolidated line style camera icon in Google's iconic colors. More attention has clearly been paid to animations, easing and smoothing when switching between applications or even accessing common control tabs in Android 13. You may not notice this initially, but when you start seeing this side by side with Android 12, you can see that there has been some extra work being put in place to make things feel a little bit smoother on the whole. When adding Chrome or web page shortcuts to your device home screen or Pixel Launch home screen, if you have the themed icon setting enabled, the mini Chrome icon will now appear themed as part of the web page or app shortcut. Previously, it just would have the colorful icon used as before. 
an almost inconsequential change in Android 13 sees some really extremely minor adjustments to app, widget and icon spacing with quick options now moved by a few pixels when you long press to bring these up from your home screen. If auto rotate mode is active on your device when expanding the quick settings panel or receiving pop-up notifications, cards and windows are now centrally aligned and smaller. These options no longer take up the full width of your screen and are now much more easier to manage. A new 6x5 grid is being added to the Pixel launcher for larger and tablet sized devices. This only activates though when you're using a device that has a screen large enough or you can go on your standard size Pixel and change the smallest width in Android's developer options to at least 600 dpi. Once enabled, quite a few tweaks happen throughout the Pixel launcher, optimizing it for tablet use. When in held in landscape mode, the Google search bar now no longer has its own row, but it is tucked away to the left side of your pinned apps on your hot seat. You're also able to adjust or add icons around that at a glance widget area. Of course, there's always enough room for an Android Easter egg and in Android 13, this is a revision of the Android 12 fun, more or less not so hidden feature. You can activate this by heading to settings about phone and tapping the Android version number multiple times until a clock widget appears. Set this to 1 p.m. or 1300 and a new rosette style Android 13 logo will appear surrounded by bubbles. This looks really familiar to Android 12, but long pressing these bubbles will switch these themed circles to a random assortment of emoji that can be changed by tapping or holding anywhere on your screen. So that's it, that's everything user facing that we found in Android 13 for Pixel phones. It's now up to other Android OEMs to adopt many of these changes in their own third party skins and software builds, but we're intrigued to see just what will change on those. We wanna know what you think though, having had this full deep dive. Do you have a favorite feature or function or is there anything you would really like to see in Android 14? I know it's a little bit early, but I was interested to see what people think should be coming to our mobile OS. Let us know down in the comment sections below. As I mentioned, it is interesting to see or hear what people are loving or even hating. As always though, I hope you enjoyed this super deep dive into Android 13. And as always, this is Damien with 95 Google saying thanks for watching and I will speak to you later. Our Android 13 coverage has been brought to you by Phoenix, the ultra lightweight case maker. Each case is completely branding free for a sleek look that doesn't detract or distract from the main event, your Pixel 6. On top of that, all cases ship in just one business day and are even backed by a 100% money back guarantee if you're not completely satisfied, which we're sure you will be. Head to the link in the description to learn more and get 20% off your own Phoenix case for your Android phone.